we are we are starting now. We should be in English. There are a lot of people. I mean, there are some people in in uh, in speaking English only, and also we are streaming this. So there are some people in Romania also uh, who were invited. So uh, first of all, I want to thank you. Thank you about the the, the event and uh, about this that you came here. Uh, what should be the agenda and the in the scope of uh, of, of is we should start with uh, some wel welcome speaks, also uh, up update about da data science, because uh, uh, we are, yeah, sorry. Uh, and also, yeah, Marin should present the others uh, two speakers. He's from uh, on text and uh, he's one of the, the, I mean, we have on text Dibipedia, and Telerik who are hosting the event. Uh, welcome, and uh, yeah, this is the agenda for today, so we will start with a uh, half an hour talk uh, by Dimitris Kontokostas. Dimitris is one of the, uh, Dimitris is a researcher at the Univers University of Leipzig. He is uh, one of the key people behind the DBpedia Foundation, so he will uh, tell us about uh, how DBpedia started, what are the current ongoing developments and the future plans. Uh, a very interesting talk. Uh, then Vladimir Alexiev uh, from Ontotext. Uh, Vladimir is an expert at Ontotext, uh, working in various projects related to open data, linked data. So he will also uh, tell us uh, very interesting uh, stuff about uh, the Bulgarian DBpedia. And uh, Vladimir also has a short uh, demo. And after that, basically, we have the open network sessions. Everybody fr is free to speak up and make announcements or, you know, just meet new people, exchange ideas. Uh, yeah, big thanks to our sponsors today, on to Text Dapas and of course Terrific Academy, providing all these nice venues, the snacks, the refreshments. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, for the live uh, question sessions, uh, please uh, use the Slido uh, site and uh, use the DSS hashtag. This information is also avi available here all the time. And uh, yeah, this uh, yeah another announcement. There is a small table with uh, additional reading materials related to linked data, open data, what DBpedia, what Ontotext is doing in various uh, projects in this area. So if you're interested, you can get some learn more and you know get more stuff for further reading. Thank you. And thank th thank you. And uh, some, something else, if you have never used this, uh, you need to open your your browser on the on the phone. So type slide dot do, do and then the hashtag is DSS. So we should start using it for the uh, for the two presentation for the QA session. Also it's much much easier and much better uh, if all of us uh, pop up their questions. The the difference is that also if you like some of the questions, you there is an option to like them so they are highly rated and we should refer to them. Uh, about them Yeah, about the Data Science Society update, I don't know how many of you know about what it is and uh, what was the main idea around that. Uh, we started uh, almost a year ago. Our, our idea was to create a platform, a platform, a place where people working in the data science sector uh, can start collaborating. What we found out that it needs to be uh, a place where people from science, from business, and also part of the education to start uh, working together, sharing knowledge, learning learning from, from, from each other. So uh, we started with uh, one core, core of uh, almost 10, 15 people. There are people from the Bulgaria Academy of Science, uh, from uh, different uh, from different businesses, from uh, most of the universities, which, which we have here located in Sofia. And uh, most of the people are, are this one. So what we what we did up to that, up, up, up to now, is we made mo uh, more than 10 meetups. They were on a different topics, different areas. We we cover some of the deep learning, NLP, uh, machine learning for music, computer vision. Also, we cover some of the tools. Yeah, it was basic, but we started with MATLAB, R language, uh, which it was introduced. Also, different domains and different sectors for uh, retail sale sector trading credit risk, predictive analytics, portfolio management. Also, we were hosted in a, on a different places, uh, in a, several universities, 
uh, Beta House 11 also and, uh, and now in, in Telerik. What we have now and uh, what we did is uh, we have a, a core team, a core team of, of experts. Also something else which is, uh, which most of you probably know is uh, yeah, we have the website and uh, now three weeks ago we started a campaign for vo vo volunteers to, to progress further and see uh, apart from uh, meetups, uh, can, we, can, can we, because what we found out that the meetups are one passive way of creating a community. So because the people only come, attend, and probably in the networking they will, they will talk. So here what we are looking for uh, is uh, to see are these people willing to learn from each other, wi wi willing to, to share knowledge, to learn, and, uh, in, and to benefit, and in that case to, to, to be that platform. So uh, about the volunteers, we are still in process of, uh, I mean, is growing. Uh, what we, we started up, up to now is that uh, we started in Sofia. And uh, what we have up to now is more than 400 emails, people in interested in, in this topic. Uh, we have people from, uh, from a lot of uh, universities. Also, there are people from uh, around, uh, uh, from different places. So now what we will try is to stream uh, our events in Plovdiv, Burgas, and uh, Varna. There, are, there is a parallel event. And also uh, in Romania, in Bucharest, Timisoara, Ikushna, Poca, we have uh, discussed with them. So uh, some of them probably should, uh, sh should uh, look uh, the, web, the webinar and uh, yeah, they can, or they can watch it later on. So what we, we found that uh, if, we, if we want to build a, su such kind of society, we have two main hypotheses. The first one is that uh, the people there will, uh, will, will be happy to spend some time, some time uh, probably on a, on a monthly or bi-monthly basis, probably one or two days working on, a, on a workshops, uh, hackathons, meetups, and that's, that, that was the reason when we were start starting thinking about the volunteers, that they can help us operationally to, to, to create something in that direction, and also as, as an expert to participate in that. For some of the hackathons, we, we spoke with uh, organizations who are already discussing, uh, or organizing such, such events also for workshops, and uh, this is one of the next steps which we see that we need to, to, to challenge and see is there is an interest because our, our idea is that we are not, uh, uh, that if the people want to be part of such events and that they are willing to sacrifice some of their time, uh, they will arrange it and they will do it. So this, this is the reason why we see us as a platform helping them and the other part is that they can work on a project. Here our idea is that uh, some people can allocate two or three or four hours per week and work on a different project. This, was, this is a list of projects which were raised based on the, uh, several uh, brainstorming sessions which we did with some of the experts. If there are for uh, different analysis of education data, media in Bulgaria, or also for op open source libraries. And something else which we think needs to be improved is to uh, about the website, how it works, and, and to be more helping of the community is, is, is itself. So probably update needs to be done in that direction. So who we are and where, where we are located, uh, we, we are trying uh, everything what we, uh, what we have as a materials to up upload in SlideShare. Also in YouTube, uh, we are recording probably the last three or four meetups. Yeah, we have several, uh, se several instances there, and also we are trying to be in the social media. And uh, the main part is uh, our website. If you are interested uh, and you want to receive our regular updates, you can uh, you can reg re register there, and uh, we are sending emails uh, re uh, regular uh, once per month about. Uh, about the updates, future events, and what was, what was happened. So, yeah, I think that's all. Thank you, and yeah, any questions? Okay, so in that case, uh, our next speaker is uh, Dimitris.
to see that open data awareness around the world is growing. And yeah, very good. So I'm going to present Wikipedia, which is a linked open data project since 2006. And I will describe the project and show the, the evolution of Wikipedia through time up to now and what we think about the future. So Wikipedia was created in 2006 and the first linked open data cloud, it was one of the core elements of a few uh, data sets around. And seven years later, in 2014, uh, the cloud grew up to 100 data sets and we're still right uh, in the center. But what Wikipedia does? So Wikipedia tries to extract data from Wikipedia uh, uh, and put them in a knowledge base so people can be able to ask sophisticated queries. It's a community effort that, for example, allows Somia get me all the soccer players who played as a goalkeeper for a club that has a stadium with more than 40,000 seats and who are born in a country with more than 10 million inhabitants. Something like this would not be possible to do it from the Wikipedia search interface, but extracting data from Wikipedia is now possible through Wikipedia. Uh, and how we get that? Although Wikipedia is mostly text, there is some structure in the Wikipedia pages and the whole Wikipedia infrastructure. For example, we have uh, categories, we have images, some articles have coordinates, there are titles, abstracts, links to other pages, links to other language editions, external links, disambiguation and redirects, and many other things that we can easily we have frameworks that can easily uh, tailor to get specific data from each page. Uh, however, the most abundant source of information in Wikipedia are the info boxes. This is the most interesting source of information. And combining with the rest, you can do many interesting things. And the thing with info boxes is that they have a table-like, uh, key value-like uh, uh, storage, so you can somehow easily extract them. And the idea is that how can we create RDF out of the info boxes? So how it started? At 2006, Soren Auer, who was the first who worked on Wikipedia, was finishing his PhD and he said that Wikipedia has these fact tables, how can we get them, extract them and produce RDF? Six months later, he didn't get anyone to help him, so he wrote something on himself and asked another Jens Lehmann to help him with uh, write the first Wikipedia paper, which is one of the most cited papers in Somali web. And then the third partner, which is Fritz Pizer, he's from the University of Berlin at the time, uh, was doing something similar. They tried to join forces and they called the whole thing Wikipedia. And Kim Sledeken, the fourth person, key person for Wikipedia, is uh, the CEO of OpenLink and Triple Store, and wanted a showcase for his uh, product, so he offered to host and support Wikipedia uh, since the beginning up to now. So some examples to see how things work. Uh, every uh, info box in Wikipedia, if you see the wiki text behind, it's like uh, the top part of the presentation. And it's like a key value pair. So we have title, Busan city, we have uh, population, which is 36 uh, 3 million, population year, the year it, the population was taken. And the idea was that for every key value pair, we create a fact which says that the name of the article, which is Busan, it has population 3.6 million. And Busan region is uh, Yongnam, and so on. And aggregating all, the, all these facts around or the whole Wikipedia created a very large knowledge base that people could easily make queries. Uh, however, this was not enough. They found out uh, very early that global project and many different contributors around the world maintain different info boxes, there was not a consistent way to create key value pairs. For example, different info boxes use occupation, some others occupations. So when you try to create the fact, even a slight variation in the name uh, would create additional ways to create the fact. So the key part that boosted Wikipedia was the Wikipedia Mappings Wiki, which is also a media wiki that the community can go and define uh, with a special syntax mappings between different info boxes about uh, things in Wikipedia to a uh, human curated ontology, which is yeah, the co ground truth for Wikipedia. Uh, we have around 26 languages supported in the map 
weekend. Bulgarian is one of the latest, but they have been very active and the work was very good, crucial for us because in the latest release they also did a lot of cleanup, not only for the Bulgarian mappings but also for English and French and all the other languages. So we thank, thank you for that. And some milestones. Uh, 2008, we created which took the live update stream of edits in Wikipedia. We hook up on the Wikipedia update stream, and as the pages were edited, we exactly them in real time and updated the bits in the knowledge base. Uh, in 2009, we had the Mappings Wiki, and we switched to a Scala-based framework that we use up to now. 2011. Up to then, we used only mostly the English uh, Wikipedia, which was the biggest one. But since 2011, we started having uh, more localized versions, starting with the Greek Wikipedia, and then we have now around 12 or 13 chapters. And another very good pro product of Wikipedia is Wikipedia Spotlight, where you can feed text and you get uh, named entities from the text. For example, if you say, you give the text, Bush is standing in front of the White House and it tries to identify entities in the text. In this case, Bush can be either George Bush or A. Bush, and the White House can be either the White House or a White House. So depending on the context, it tries to match different combinations and provide the best entity for a text. And 2014, we had the Wikipedia Association, which tries to be an umbrella on top of all the Wikipedia activities and projects. And while funding and move the project uh, forward. Some uh, facts, the latest release which was done in, uh, in September, we had facts about 4.5 million things and 580 million, 3 million facts. Uh, 131 million facts came from info boxes, 168 million from uh, structural data from Wikipedia, and we also had 58 million links to other data sets. And when we say links, for example, we say that the, Wikipedia, the page about Obama in Wikipedia is the same about is listing about in another database. So we have links to cross ref different uh, things around uh, the web. Uh, we also extract data from 127 languages, but most, for most of these languages, we don't have enough data. Uh, for 28 languages, we will have mappings, we have more data, and 12 chapters exist. One of them is the Bulgarian chapter. And another visualization of what is going on at the moment. So, Wikipedia, which is common source for many different uh, projects that try to get data from Wikipedia. One is Wikipedia, and another was Freebase, if you're aware of it. It was acquired by Google a few years ago. And Freebase was taking data from Wikipedia and also from other sources like IMDB, OpenStreetMap. And it was the main source of the Google Knowledge Graph, the things you see when you search in Google in the side box. Uh, Google decided to close Freebase and they want to move the data from Freebase to Wikidata, which is a Wikimedia project for hosting structured data. And on the other hand, we have Wikipedia, which is part of the Linked Open Data Cloud. We have links to all uh, these resources. Some of the sources that Freebase, for example, was taking, like OpenStreetMap, they have semantic web views, like Link Your Data, which is something like Wikipedia is for Wikipedia. And what we're working on now is to go to the next step and use all the additional knowledge we have on the cloud to create the Wikipedia Plus, which will be a bigger and more curated, highly curated data set with better quality over time. Uh, some things about Wikidata. Uh, it is a Wikimedia project that wants to start putting the community of Wikipedia to putting data in a database, something like Wikipedia does. Uh, it started like three or four years ago, and they've gone a long way so far, but uh, they, I think in a few years, they, they, they are basically quite complete, but at the moment, uh, a lot of things are missing that are, can be found in Wikipedia. And what we do at the moment is we try to create 
mapping for from Wikidata to extract the data in Wikidata and for some calls from Wikipedia plus. Uh, that's for now, but Wikipedia also has to evolve. Uh, and the things we are currently seeing factors for moving forward is one is knowledge fusion, uh, validation, natural language processing, and the enterprise. So for fusion, what we try to do now is that we try to combine all the different data we have from all different languages, like for Bulgarian, for English, German, Italy, and try to combine them and fuse the data and provide a single view of combining all the data in different media. And the idea is that a user will be able to vote on facts, and depending on the voting, we can give feedback to an algorithm, but the next time we produce more highly curated uh, data and we have an interface that can help the users validate the facts over the web. Like if you want to validate that Tom Cruise was starting Mission Impossible, then the facts of, for example, could search the web and tell you that this is probably correct by 90% or 30% and so on. So we can have a better feeling. Uh, for validation, uh, the idea is that we have some steps that validate data so far, but we want to make it more efficient and uh, be better targeted. So we have Wikipedia as a source that is fed into Wikipedia, and using the mappings, we create a data stack. And we want to put more validation steps on top so that we can feed error reports to the mapping community that fix their mappings or as a bug report. And the most interesting part we want to achieve is to try to identify errors from Wikipedia and feed them to the Wikipedia community so that they can fix them and improve them over time. Uh, for natural language processing, okay, we have the info boxes, which is a very good source of information, but usually the text contains a lot more information, and NLP can help find, help us get additional knowledge from the text. Uh, so our approach will be to somehow create uh, an interface, an API, where people want to plug their NLP tools and or uh, processes so that they can produce data out of the text and then we can combine this and find the best quality or the best approach. And we want to define an interface and we need some help up from the community. <coughs> And one last thing is that every enterprise needs some kind of a knowledge base. But the problem is that uh, Wikipedia ha has knowledge about a very big range of things. Usually an, an enterprise needs only a part of it, not the whole thing. So for example, a travel agency might be interested in data from Wikipedia about cities, sightseeing, and places, while in an automotive industry only about cars. So we exploring ways of how we could possibly slice Wikipedia in parts and yeah, for example have Wikipedia for travel, Wikipedia for cars and Wikipedia for different things, which would be very interesting for data. And we are also interested in ideas from people from the community, you maybe. And here are some projects that involve Wikipedia since we don't have funding at the moment on our own so we use usually European projects where Wikipedia takes part and through the projects we are trying to move Wikipedia forward. One part is yeah what I'm working on is aligned where we try to provide more validation steps. Uh, frame is more on the like the spotlight things like the text extraction and annotation. Uh, Smart Data Web is trying to create enterprise Closed enterprise knowledge bases based on Wikipedia. In Geno, it's mostly about uh, geospatial data. And for those who are missing the query about the soccer players who said at the beginning, yeah. and yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Any questions here? Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah. Uh, from what you 
are considering, but quality is also a very big factor for this. For example, for Europeana, I hear that although they have a very large collection of data, it's not so highly curated that can be easily used directly. Maybe also Vladimir can say something about this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, we at the moment trying to somehow 
job itself maintained outside of uh, the university at the moment because right now we, we mostly have funds through university and we have PhD students like me working on things as a researchers and apply them on Wikipedia. And the idea is we want to have enough money to hire a developer to work full time on this, but yeah, up to now we cannot, but we hope we will. Can you say something more about uh, the closing of uh, Freebase by Google and the transition to Wikidata? So, uh, Google acquired Freebase some years ago and they used it to build their, their knowledge graph. And in February, I think, they announced that they are closing Freebase and will make it uh, read only for some time. And their direction would be to migrate the data from Freebase to Wikidata. They, we don't know why they did that, if they have now their own database or they want to use with data directly, but I think they don't want to give free base uh, to the people because it was an open API, people were using it, and I think they want people to not have access to their knowledge graph or more control access. I will send it. Ah, there is one here. Yeah. I will send it. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the presentation, we are, we are uploading on the website. We also have the video and uh, everything is going to be there. I mean, apart from this, if you don't have no, any no, restriction. No, no, it's, it's open. Yeah, yeah. yeah, OK. So thank you, yeah. and yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. So now our, our next speaker, Vlado. So he will tell more, more about himself, his experience, and, and present the slide. and my presentations are already shared. 
I have maybe three, but I will not uh, bore you with three. We'll see how many. So it's on Vladimir Alexiev GitHub IO, and these are three things that I presented in Dublin in February when we started being more active in DBpedia. And um, there's maybe another on Wikipedia on Wikidata, but I don't know if I'll have time to talk about it. So text I deal with uh, semantic data integration and ontology engineering and also with cultural heritage. So I'm very glad about that question about using archival data and Telupeana. Uh, truth be told, Telupeana has about 40 million objects but quite few quality, I mean it's very hard to tell the quality objects from the junk in Europeana. We work on two Europeana related projects and it's a major problem in all of them and uh, we're now using semantic enrichment to try and resolve some of these problems. As for library data, there is VIAF, Virtual International Authority file, which has integrated information from about 20 national libraries on 33 million people. In contrast, in Wikipedia and DBpedia, you have 2.8 million people. As for places, you have geonames, that's 9 million places, and these are all the places that you're ever going to need. Plus, you have OpenStreetMap, which is maybe 100 million addresses down to Wi-Fi hotspots and uh, garbage cans in the cities and recycling bins. Uh, so it really is a matter of what sort of background data you need and how you integrate it and also what domain data you need for a particular domain. And a final remark on cultural heritage, uh, archives are not well organized. Basically the mode of operation of an archive is that you have a hundred boxes that you have never opened and maybe you have just a description of who gave you that box when. Well. Yeah, it varies. It's different in the Dutch National Archives. But for example, yeah, the, the standard DAD says you have finding gates to maybe tell you what is in these boxes in some of them. Uh, but actually, the the nicest question that I heard was how can we get involved and I hope that I can spark your interest for some local initiatives with Bulgarian DBpedia. So okay, let's get started with Bulgarian DBpedia. Um, Ontotext has been using DBpedia for quite a long time, maybe over even before I joined Ontotext, so maybe six years ago in various European projects. But about half a year ago, we started more actively looking at how this data gets produced. And rather than just bitching about a data problem to figure out how to resolve it. So uh, we started hosting the Bulgarian DBpedia in February. And it has a simple home page where you can basically go and type a name or you can also do Sparkle queries. There's a couple in my presentation. Sparkle is somewhat similar to SQL but for a semantic web. So let's say uh, we want to search for Vazov and then you can see this is General Vladimir Vazov. This is Ivan Vazov, the writer. Now the information about Ivan Vazov is not so rich though. You have a description, you have some links here, you have a type, he's an artist and a writer and so on. You have the birth and death place, you have a bunch of links and you have information about the page itself and how many links and stuff. In the English DBpedia, you have somewhat better information, so at least you have the birth and death date and so on. Uh, but you see here it says date of death and then that date. In this case they happily coincide, but that's not always the case. So there's various redundancies, inconsistencies and so on and so forth. And in addition to just deploying this, basically getting a data set that the extraction framework has produced and putting it in our semantic database, we also have this guy, Buyan Simeon, 
looked at uh, making some small fixes to the extraction framework, setting it up for Bulgarian dates and so on. So we have here some uh, metrics about it. We have 12 million statements out of, what was it, 580 million. So it's a relatively fair size Wikipedia or DBpedia. We have uh, 270,000 pages, but the Wikipedia people tell me that only about 150 are content pages. The others are, for example, list of things that happened in a particular year. We have 34,000 people, 5,000 organizations. And in the next presentation, which is called Creating a DBpedia Mapping, I'll show you how you can add to these numbers, how you can extract more people and so on. We have unhappily 195,000 pages that uh, don't have a type. In other words, there is a page, there is some information, but either there's no info box or we do not have a mapping to extract it. Or we extract some data but don't know the, the type of that thing. Is it a football game? Is it a football championship in 1994, which is a major source of pride for Bulgaria? Or is it a folk singer? Actually, there's a lot of them. So um, now quickly just to, here's a simple view of uh, a resource, an object. If it has an image, we show it. We show the abstract. You can download it as any of the semantic formats, such as Turtle RDF. Also JSON, that's a fairly useful format for developers. Here's some sample queries. These are, can you see any of these? Well, these are s very simple counts. Give me total number of, pa of uh, facts, total number of pages, and then give me pages that are about DBO person, organization, and so on. Pages without type. Then I also made uh, an Excel of pages without type, but also listing all of their DBpedia ca Wikipedia categories. So this is useful information to the Wikipedia community that can take and dig into the highly populated categories that don't have a mapping can tell me. Either make a mapping or, or information better so that it can be extracted. Uh, biggest pages or pages with the most links, but these are not very really semantic or interesting queries. Now, if you get to actually ask, asking interesting questions, for example, give me the biggest uh, s biggest places, biggest settlements by land area. Now the problem start. According to the Bulgarian DBpedia, the biggest places are the villages of Mutenica and the Bulgarian and so on. Now, if you look at the page for Mutenica, it says that the size is 33,000 kilometers. That's a little too large. Now, another problem is what people use for a decimal point, OK, we use both of them, but they're also using the space. Even the space is OK, but if you put, if you have a markup in Wikipedia, non-breaking space, the extractor framework isn't going to. So it says, OK, the size is one square kilometer. It ignores the rest. Now, after, right after Sofia comes Batak with the size of 461 square kilometers, but one of the Wikipedia admins, he's a very smart IT guy, but works for a metal construction company. So this is one way you can help. If you're savvy with IT, help Wikipedia make better structure and better templates, and then we can extract. So he says that uh, this is correct. Now, another problem it is that right now in DBpedia, we don't have information about the Bulgarian administrative structure, the place structure. They get this from Ekate, but they hide it deeply in embedded templates in Wikipedia that the extraction framework cannot handle. But recently, they switched to Wikidata, and now with this fusion between DBpedia data and Wikidata, hopefully in a few months, three, four months, we can have that info. Now, if you make a query like this to find uh, the places with the largest population, you will get something that looks like a correct list, maybe, hopefully. Now I turn to looking at musical artists. And there is 
one template musical artist that maps to either band, which is an organization, or uh, a person, a musical artist. And the mapping, and this is a piece of a mapping, you see that it is a simple MediaWiki template, and it says here a condition. So if there is a property called foam or background, then we will assume that is a band. Well, this is false. If the background is singer, he singer or she singer, that's definitely a person. So it came out that Lili Ivanova and Goran Bregovic are bands. Now, some will argue that Lili Ivanova actually is an institution, so that is correct. She's an organization. But we fix that with some rather complicated logic. And let's, let's just look at this one link. So this is the, the mapping site, the DVpedia mapping. You see that anyone can make an account here. And after you make an account, you'll be able to edit this. And basically, we introduce this complicated casing saying, well, if the background is a uh, director, then this means a music director. Unfortunately, here we cannot handle the gender. We can only handle the gender because it's a linear list of conditions. So this is a shortcoming of the extraction framework. And luckily, it's on GitHub, and you can make issues. And I have asked that we need more, we need some more branching, right? If it's a director, I still want to be able to check the gender and say he director or she director. OK, so this is the casing. Now Lily Ivanova is a female singer. And so are a, a thousand folk singers. I'm very glad about that. Ivana and so on. Um, now, there were some crazy things. Trigonomic, trigonometric function and the World Cup 94 was also singers or musical artists. For some reason, somebody had used the musical artist template on the page. The strange thing in Wikipedia is that when you go correct something, the knee-jerk reaction is somebody's going to delete your correction. And you have to explain, but like this is wrong. This breaks this other thing. But gradually, when you get into the community, then And finally, um, here's a query that looks up artists or bands. And if they have a field called uh, gen genre, we just tabulate the genre. Um, there's 520 genres. Pop music, Bulgarian folk music. So uh, interestingly, but not surprisingly, Bulgarian folk, folk music is the genre of 400 musicians. OK, this is the end of this presentation. Now I'll turn to the other one, which is how you can add, how you can add uh, prop, uh, mapping, how you can contribute to DVpedia, either correct the mapping or add a new one. So uh, the first thing to do is some preparation. I'm going to skip it, but basically the idea is that rather than ugly URLs like this one, URL encoded, you want better human readable URLs in Kyrillic. So there is a plugin for Chrome that can do that, and another plugin that is going to help you for another thing. And you want a text editor to hook up to your browser. The next thing you need to find, you want to find a template to map. So there is a statistics page. If you click on this link, you'll see the statistics for Bulgaria. And we're doing fairly well on biographies, on places. Now, there has been massive reorga reorganizations of the template system. And as I find that it gets out of sync, I go in and fix some mappings. And I thought, well, let's make a mapping of uh, models. Constantina Zhivova sounds like a nice lady. Let's have her out there in link data. So when you click here, you will get uh, an 
empty template. So this template property says what is in Wikipedia and ontology property you need to fill yourself. Find it out in other templates, maybe in English, and fill it out. So the first thing is IMDB, the International Movie Database. Turns out that some Bulgarian models, actually not all of them are Bulgarian, right? Because they're also actors, they have an IMDB ID. If you just search for IMDB, you won't find anything, but if you search for IMDB star, you find the field which is called IMDB ID. Okay? But now there's something wrong that somebody said only films have such IDs. Well, no, people also have such IDs. So I had to go in and do an edit of the property definition to be able to apply it. And uh, the next thing I wanted, well, vital signs of a model, right? What are they? Height, width, uh, breast size, and zodiac sign, right? So it's quite important to find out the correct term in English. There's a, a French guy that keeps making new stuff because he cannot find the English properties. And that, I mean, the whole purpose of this mapping is that you get data from many different languages, but it maps out to the same structure. So it turned out that for uh, Zodia, there is no property. I made one, figured out from Wikipedia that the proper term is Zodiac sign. And then you need to put a label and a comment. We've made that an editorial policy that you have to describe what, is this, what this is about. Still, the majority of properties do not have a definition, a comment, which hurts us immensely. I mean, when you need to figure what are these 20 properties and which one should I put? It's very hard. So in this case, it turns out that there are two important What is going to be the value of the zodiac sign? A string or a page? If it's a page or an object, you need to make it an object property. It turns out that in Wikipedia, they link up to the pages for the, the 12 pages for the zodiac. So you want an object property. And the domain, in other words, what can have a zodiac sign is people, but not only. The planets also has it. Then the other thing is, if you find a problem, the DVPD Association and the DVPD Ontology Mapping Committee would very much like you to make uh, an issue. There's three trackers now, Mappings Tracker, Ontology Tracker, and whatever on GitHub. And so I noticed that there are, ah, shoe size is another vital property, right? I mean, if it's whether the golden uh, shoe is going to fit on the small foot or not, that's a very important question. So I found that property, shoe size and shoe number. And this is bad. I mean, then how do you make a query to find all of the ladies with a small foot. You need to make a more complicated query to ask for two properties. And then I just looked at how many times each of them is used. And I wrote an issue saying, let's kill the other one, the minor one, and merge it up to the bigger, to the property that has higher usage. And then you have to describe the problem. You have to put in your signature at the end so that people know who is saying that and when, and that maybe there's going to be a discussion. Um, and then a final example. In the Bulgarian Wikipedia, there is a field called Merki with three numbers connected with dashes. Whoever knows a bit about fashion knows that this is the bust, waist, and hip size. In other Wikipedias, I guess in the English and the Japanese Wikipedias want to be able to sort by hip size and bust size. And maybe they have interesting applications for that. But I had to make a composite property for these three. And then in the comment, you should say, well, use that only if you have one field in Wikipedia with the three numbers. Otherwise, use separate properties for that. So the complete mapping for uh, uh, model includes vital statistics like uh, skin color, hair color, eye color, name, IMDB ID, and so on and so forth. 
then you want to test the mapping, there is a very nice uh, extraction tester. So if you click on this URL, but Dimitris, right now it's broken. I made a okay. I made an issue. <laughs> you can see. Uh, we want such links on the discussion page of every mapping so that people can check it and test it, especially when changes are made to the mapping. And I want to finish by explaining how we use uh, DBpedia at onto text. So somebody asked how you make money with it. Well, we use it in several European projects. Right now, two active projects are multi-sensor for semantic enrichment of media, news articles, and so on. And there's maybe seven languages. One of them is Bulgarian. And we use DBpedia for language resources. The other one is even more interesting, Europeana Food and Drink. So there's going to be 60,000 content objects from 20 different providers in 11 languages and we have to deal with as many as we can including Bulgarian we're also working with the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences the IST Institute with uh, two linguists there but we use the Wikipedia articles about hunting agriculture <coughs> foods flavors and whatnot for all this sort of stuff Okay, are there questions? Yeah, there are some questions. Uh, I've met two or three times with uh, the Bulgarian Wikipedia community. I think they're going to be setting up an association. I w say again? They did already, okay. I like them very much because they're enthusiastic. Unfortunately, they're very small. My understanding is that one of the, the savviest IT guys there is, you know, the guy works at the metals company. They can use all the help they can get. Uh, they did two <coughs> nice projects with uh, Guam institutions in Bulgaria, culture heritage institutions. One was with the zoo printed QR codes so that you can scan an animal and see it on, on your smartphone. The other one was with the National Archives to uh, go and uh, uh, take photos of important photos, old photos, and use them, put them in comments and use them in Wikipedia. Actually, this is my personal most important application of Wikipedia and DBpedia in Bulgaria to try and incentivize the Bulgarian museums to use that as a common shared knowledge <coughs> base when they do cataloging. Currently, to my knowledge, almost no museums in Bulgaria do cataloging. And the point is when they start describing an object, they should not have to write who Asparuchis or Ivanasen and so on. They should be able to find it. And better on the Bulgarian DVP. And it's a shame to have less information about some of our kings than you can find in the English. Uh, yeah, there is, well, first of all, there are many semantic search and semantic querying tools. For, for example, semantic faceting or making geographic maps or timelines. Uh, one toolkit that is widely used is by MIT, the Simile toolkit. Exhibit is something that makes timelines and so on. The other, the other idea is there is an NLP interface to Sparkle. Uh, basically, you enter controlled natural language, which gets translated into Sparkle. Who are we partnering with in Bulgaria? We um, started an association called Bulgariana for contributing content to Europeana, and it's headed by uh, Valeria Fall, who's a famous archaeologist, the wife of the former Minister of Culture, maybe 10, 15 years ago, and many other people from the Ethnographic Institute, from Institute of Mathematics and Informatics, who have a digitization lab. Unfortunately, there is no funding in Bulgaria for culture 
to my understanding. There is some no, so now some Norwegian funding. We're hoping that the institutions that won some of these calls will do the right thing and comply with widely adopted standards and use available shared print open data and so on. But we're open for uh, collaboration with pretty much anyone. I mean, if you need some data, chance it's available in Wikipedia, try to organize a community to expand it, and we'll help you extract it in a structured way. Can you plug other sources for, do you mean for interlinking or for extraction? Who, who well, asked that question? <laughs> yeah, probably it's online. Ah, OK. Um, well, we are not very experienced with the DBpedia extraction framework. We're basically still only users of it with small contributions and a lot of uh, demands on can you add this enhancement and can you please handle this format and blah, blah. But uh, we have done a lot of semantic data integration, which means grabbing data from different pieces and correlating it by something and putting it together. Okay, so I think uh, this is the end of the of today event. So now we'll go to the next a little bit happier part. Is just uh, it's a it's a networking. So uh, also thanks to onto text, there there is a, a, a catering. So yeah, we were thinking about beer, but it's against Taylor uh, regulation or rules. So we have some. Yeah, we just want to keep the good. Uh, uh, atmosphere and uh, speak uh, and sh and know each, each each other better. So there is water and uh, non-alcoholic drinks. Thank you.